In Windows 10, the anti-malware, security and identity, PowerShell, VBScript, and JScript teams have collaborated to allow applications to become active participants in malware defense. To do this, we're introducing a brand new way to help protect customers from dynamic, script-based malware and non-traditional avenues of attack. We're calling this AMSI, the Anti-Malware Scan Interface. To demonstrate the problem we're trying to address, let's look at the traditional cat and mouse game played by malware authors and antivirus vendors. Here's an example of a malicious PowerShell script. We'll use PowerShell as a demonstration, but the techniques and processes we'll go through apply to all dynamic languages. VBScript, Perl, Python, Ruby, and more. While this script simply writes a message to the screen, malware is typically more nefarious. We can write a signature to detect this one easily. For example, searching for the string write host pwned in any file that the user opens. After being caught by our first signature though, malware authors will respond. This usually happens by moving to dynamic script invocation. Here the malware author creates a string representing the PowerShell script to be run but they use simple string concatenation to break our earlier signature. If you ever view the source of an ad-laden web page, you'll see tons of this technique being used to avoid ad-blocking software. Finally, they call the invoke expression commandlet, PowerShell's mechanism to evaluate scripts that are composed or created at runtime. In response, we update our anti-malware engine to start doing basic language emulation. For example, if we see two strings being concatenated, we emulate the concatenation of those two strings and then run our signatures on the result. Unfortunately, this is a fairly fragile approach as languages tend to have a lot of different ways to represent and concatenate strings. So after being caught by this signature, malware authors will move to something more complicated, such as encoding their scripts in Base64. Being bright and resourceful, though, most anti-malware engines have implemented emulation of Base64 decoding as well, so we're ahead for a time. In response, malware authors move to algorithmic obfuscation, such as simple XOR encoding, in the scripts they run. At this point, we're generally past what antivirus engines will emulate or detect, so we won't necessarily detect what this script is actually doing. However, we can start to write signatures against the obfuscation and encoding techniques. In fact, this is what accounts for the vast majority of signatures for script-based malware. But what if the obfuscator is so trivial that it looks like many well-behaved scripts? A signature for that would generate an unacceptable number of false positives. In this example, we are simply downloading a web page and invoking some content from it. Here is the equivalent in Visual Basic. What makes things worse in both of these examples is that antivirus inspects files being opened by the user. If the malicious content lives only in memory, the attack goes undetected. The crux of the issue is that scripting engines are able to run code that was generated at runtime. This is where the new anti-malware scan interface comes in. While the malicious script may go through several passes of deobfuscation, it ultimately needs to supply the scripting engine with plain, unobfuscated code. When it gets to this point, the application can now call the new Windows AMC API to request a scan of this unprotected content. The Windows AMC interface is open, and the application can call it, and any registered anti-malware engine can process the content submitted to it. While we've been talking about this in the context of scripting engines, it doesn't need to stop there. Skype and Messenger are other major sources of potentially malicious content and another great opportunity. There are plenty of more opportunities, this is just a start. Now let's take a look at AMC in action. In this script, we've got Base64 encoding of an XOR encoding, and we're downloading it from the internet. And to make things more interesting, we'll enter it manually at the command line where there is no file to monitor.
As you can see, Defender was able to detect the EICAR standard test string in this complicated scenario while only using the BOG standard EICAR detection signature. Thank you.